Do you know who used to actually uh, perform in one of those? It was Betty White. Yes. A very I young and hot that. Betty White. Yes, I heard that she was pretty good at that stuff. Are you aware that Betty White was born before sliced bread was invented? Sliced bread oh. was the hottest thing, was the I... <laughs> best thing since Betty White. I, be I believe it. I believe yep. it. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local music scene and the people that make it, including me and this young lady. I met my guest at the Strat Casino inside Remix Lounge at the Homegrown Songwriter Showcase when it was being held there. It's run by Hal Savar, and now it's at Soul Belly Barbecue. If you're a fan of the channel, you already know I live stream that every Sunday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and I also do a review video of the previous week's performance. And I'll be there again this Sunday, so if you want to be, drop on by Main Street in downtown Las Vegas to Soul Belly Barbecue, come on by. It'll be a good time. Uh, if not, check out the live stream. The, um, the link for that will be, well, you know what, subscribe, and then you'll, you'll find out when I'm doing it. I guess as a singer, songwriter, producer, engineer, pianist, <laughs> and s describes her sound like Yanni, John Tesh, Siberian Orchestra, or Mannheim Steamroller. Uh, you're working, she's working on the follow-up to her 2019 album, My Ivory Towers. Yes. Please welcome to the channel, Thank Kathy you. Reese. Thank you. It's good to be here. Thanks for having me. Welcome to the channel. Can I toast this occasion? With Room 6. There you go. Room 6. Mm. You're right. Should, should have tapped it. We didn't tap. That's it. <laughs> it's okay. Um, incidentally, if you'd like to be on the channel, whether reviewed, interviewed, or both, you know what to do. Hit me up using the email address or the Room 6 social media link down in the description. Uh, that social media link is also where you can find room6.shop for the merch. You like it? And you can also find the Patreon page. There's patron-only content there. Uh, and, of course, my own two CDs that I put out under the name Joshua Courtright. Now then, not a lot online for you, young lady. Uh, no. But it's okay. I've managed to find a couple things. Number one, Indiana to Vegas, huh? Yeah, yeah. Now, you lived in where, Indiana? At uh, Munster, Indiana. Munster, okay. I was born okay. in the house I was raised in. Now, I met my wife during her... She took. She did that gap year thing between your junior and senior year of college. Okay. And she, her parents lived in California at the time, and I met her there. And she graduated from IU in Bloomington, Indiana. Yeah. So I spent a year there. That's I'm well versed in do what? <laughs> <laughs> in the onion? Yes. Yes. Uh, I miss the yogis. Anyway, I, I just had to ask, when you were in Indiana, or mm -hmm. how old were you when you moved to Vegas? Put it that way. Uh, I was uh, 40... Three. Okay, so you weren't moved. I wasn't. You wasn't young. a child. I was. We stayed in the uh, Triceria until I was. Uh, actually, I was actually thirty-eight. Then no, it's not like forty-three. It's thirty-eight. Uh, I transferred here with a job I was. Uh, I had, and uh, they promoted me and paid everything and moved nice. the entire family and put us in housing for three months. And I said, "Well, gee, you know that sounds like a pretty cool deal." So right I came out, and we haven't left. We stayed. <laughs> Uh, speaking of hanging out, make sure you stick around. We're going to be hearing a song from this young lady. Uh, off of the album, right? Uh, it's brand new. Oh, it's brand, brand new. Off the next project. Off the next project. Exclusive for Room 6 viewers. I don't know about that, but um, <laughs> stick around. We'll see her up in Room 6. Um, it's going to be a good time. So, yeah. I wanted to also ask, what, did were you part of the music scene in Indiana before you moved? Or was this a, I came to Vegas and then started doing it? <laughs> well, it kind of feels like that's where it promoted, and that's where it really started to jump out. But no, we, uh, my husband and I, Tom, we uh, we met and started doing music. He's basically the person who taught me everything I know. Wow. Uh, he's taught me my sure music fault. theory and <laughs> bought me my first guitar. And then when we got married, we started little bands uh, you know, back in Indiana, and we did little things here and there, but um, it wasn't. It didn't really take off till we got here, and it was because we just really got. I really got involved more uh, with worship teams and different church bands, and um, started writing, and just really started hitting it hard. You know. Yeah, there's a double-edged sword about being a musician in Vegas. It's very oversaturated, especially for original yeah. musicians. Yeah. But there's a ton of places to play, yes. and as long as you're not like, well, how much are you going to pay me? If you just are, I'm trying to play and get my name out there and really go, there's a ton of places, including yeah. showcases, like at Soul Belly Barbecue, bringing it back around. Uh, hey, yo. Boom. 
Yep. Now, you actually did all the music for a radio drama. Yes, we did. Uh, my husband, Tom Reese, is actually a writer. He's an author. And uh, mm. he actually created all of these short stories. And um, he had, he had um, written them just for an audio concept to put them on the radio. And we were on KDON out here for a little over a year. And it just went really, really well. And so we, um, we created several. And, and then a publisher heard us from New Mexico it's called Speaking Volumes. And um, my husband would write the, the scripts and, and help direct and do the production. And I would do all the engineering, the music, the sound effects, the foley, and help with some of the direction as well. Uh, and it was, it was really interesting. It was a lot of fun, but it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Wow. It sounds like <laughs> a lot of work. It, yeah. it's, so it was kind of like an audio podcast, only not. It was more like an, well, it was a radio drama. It was a TV it. show without yeah. the video. You see, kids. Yeah. It used to be the only way you could get entertainment was from your radio. That's right. It was from things like radio dramas and the news. <laughs> That's right. Yep. Yeah. Um, do you know who used to actually uh, perform in one of those? It was Betty White. Yes. A very I young and her. hot Betty White. Yes. I heard that she was pretty good at that stuff. Are you aware that Betty White was born before sliced bread was invented? Sliced bread oh. was the hottest thing, was the I, <laughs> best thing since Betty White. I, be, I believe it. I believe yep. it. That woman's been around a long time. But she yeah. was amazing. She was an incredible woman. You are missed. Yeah, I truly missed. Hmm. But. Right on. Um, I want to ask some of more, my more usual interview questions now. Okay. Let's talk musical influence. Okay. And when I say that, I mean, let's boil it down to what is that earliest musical influence, that first time you're like, I want to do that, whether it was a, a particular artist or a song or, or just an instrument or what? The funniest thing is the first thing I can remember doing is back in the days, um, um, I was probably eight, nine years old, and I remember riding in my, my, my dad's station wagon and Song Song Blue came on the radio. Oh, yes. Remember that? Song Song Blue. Mm -hmm. And Nailed I remember going, I love that. Well, I had just gotten this little slide flute as a kid, you know. I, I forget how I got it. But I remember walking around my neighborhood playing that tune on a slide whistle. And going, God, this is great. And so somebody started yelling at me to shut up. But anyway, it was a lot of fun until that happened. <laughs> but I remember thinking, this is so much fun, you know, so to make music. Huh? Yeah. Nice. But uh, I didn't take it seriously until a few years later. But I've been singing since I was probably 14, 13, 14. Right on. Yeah. Uh, okay, so from there, I wanted to talk. How, well, I want to ask, how long have you been performing as Kathy Reese? Um, I actually started in 2014, I want to okay. say. So, uh, you had a couple of years before COVID. <laughs> yeah, I had a couple. <laughs> Thanks, COVID. I got, I got started late. I, I, you know, I raised my kids and, and uh, yeah. had a full-time job, and um, I, I kind of put that first, and I had a lot of things to learn, you know. Mm -hmm. I started my own studio and, and started to really learn my own thing. Um, we did the studio at the, um, at the audio dramas, and... That's what really kind of triggered the instrumental album because when I would do a soundtrack for an audio drama, I'd have all this stuff left over. And, uh, and I remember going, geez, if I could just develop this song, it'd be great. And my husband said, you know, you really need to turn that into a full song. And, and it started with one song called Ireland forever in my heart and I had been in Ireland with my family Okay. and I was sitting there ironing a pair of pants for my sister's birthday party and we were in our room and I, I just popped in my head and I thought oh this is really cute had my guitar with me and I, I banged it out later on with my brother and I'm like okay I think I got this I went home and forgot it <laughs> and I remembered it like six months later <laughs> I went yes. wait a minute wasn't that the song I, oh yeah so I, I put it down on the piano and I just kind of went out and I forgot it again and I'm like, this is not a good song if it's not going to stay. Right. Well, then we used it, and it came back. And I fooled a full orchestra. Everything in my head just nice. peeled out on a weekend. And I feel like every songwriter's had that moment of, oh, why didn't I write that down? Or why didn't I record that? And nowadays, yeah. with technology, you know, you can pretty much build a whole song if you want on your phone. That's right. That's right. Um, awesome. So, with, following that question, have you done a lot of... Um, have you done a lot of shows, or has it been mostly dropping in showcases and open mics and things? I've been dropping in showcases um, because of COVID and because of my commitments with uh, other things. Uh, it's been really very um, demanding. The, the album itself took us almost five years to finish. 
Mm. And it took that our, our engineer had been sick and, and, and actually passed away at the time the CD oh, was finished. And uh, so we were really working on his schedule, trying to make sure that he was he wanted to be there for every step. And so you know we kind of took our time. We took breaks in the middle of it, and, and then I got sick, and I was like, okay, well, we're kind of working against each other here. But it uh, it worked itself out, you know. Um, but we took our time, and it's a good thing we did. A couple songs that uh, wouldn't have been on the album came out um, in the very last minutes of recording the album. Uh, the Journey Home, which is a huge instrumental piece, uh, that came out um, two weeks before we were supposed to start mastering. Oh, nice! And so it was. It was right after I'd had um, ear surgery, and um, I, I shouldn't have been able to do it. I, I still can't figure out how I did it. <laughs> But um, we wrote that, I wrote that in the whole weekend, and it just came mm. out, and we just arranged it and gave it to Peter, and Peter mastered the whole thing, so. Wow. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's kind of cool. Speaking of the album, I put all, you know, links for Kathy down in the description, so make sure that you click on them and follow her so you can find <laughs> out what's going on there, but also so you can get your own copy of Ivory Towers. Um, got a couple more questions, okay. so you made it, yeah, almost. <laughs> Want to talk gear. Now you rock a keyboard. Yeah. And uh, what gear do you play at a sh if you're like okay, I'm gonna do a set. Uh huh. What gear are you bringing? What gear I'm bringing? My how keyboard. does someone sound like Obviously. you? Yeah. Oh good. That's I bring a backup. I have a. I, I believe in instrumental music uh, needs to be enhanced. Is you want the full. Oh, you mean a backing track. The backup track. You want to have the full influence of the song. Um, sometimes it's just hard to make them fly by themselves without the influence of all those wonderful strings and horns and all that stuff. I really like to have the full presentation. So I bring a backing track. I bring a keyboard. I bring a guitar. A lot of times I'll play some acoustic um, guitar stuff with just a folksy uh, little segment and. Um, and then you know, I just kind of let it fly. We'll see what happens. You well, what know? brand? Uh, what brands are you playing? I love, I love Korg. Korg is my favorite keyboard, but no, I am, I am game, playing right? a Yamaha MX88. Yamaha. I love a Yamaha. Yes, um, I it's Yamaha a beautiful also. board, and I just love it. I'm actually, you know, hoping to get a couple more down the road here, but I, I think I have to ask Mister for permission. I, it's a Mister Santa. Mister Santa. <laughs> I need to ask the Mister Santa man yeah. uh, for uh, for some, you know, some nice gifts this year. Nice. But um, yeah, so I'm doing that, but I'm, I'm really actually in the last like three months I've been focusing on uh, more guitar work because I have a lot of acoustical folksy stuff that I have not been able to do due to my ears and due to my, my hearing issue. Uh, I'm getting my voice back, I'm singing again, which is I had to take five, six years, I couldn't sing, and I'm back to singing again. So this is really wonderful. I, I get to play the stuff I've been wanting to play for, you know, six years, whatever. Right. So it's kind of cool. Right on. All right. Last question. You made it. Made it. Yes. And don't forget, stick around. You'll be hearing <laughs> some music from her upstairs, up in room six. Uh, let's pretend we're talking to little Kathy. Okay. I asked this of all my prey. Uh, really what we're doing is we're talking to new musicians. There's a new okay. musician out there who's like, uh, they're just getting into it. Uh -huh. What is one thing you wish someone had told you about getting into the music business? No expectations. Um, you know, the biggest thing, I think the most frustrating thing for me was expecting, I see someone perform and do the song and it must have been so easy, the boom. And because you're talented, you got all this voice and all these abilities. And I think it just, my assumption was it comes so naturally. Mm -hmm. Well, it does come naturally, but the other stuff does not. Everything else is very difficult and, and the world is not what it used to be. And so you have to be patient and persistent and actually steadfast. You just have to really stick with it, don't give up, and just keep, you know, pulling the plow. You can't have no quit in you. You can, and that's right. Honestly, I'm a big believer that uh, the old saying of practice makes perfect is wrong. Practice makes better. Yes. Practice does not make talent. Because mm -hmm. when you see someone who's like, oh, they're so talented, it isn't that they're a better musician than you are. <laughs> I mean, maybe they are only because they've been doing it longer. Right. What they're better at is believing their own hype. Right. You have to believe that you, people are lucky to hear your music and that right. you were up there for a reason. You were chosen to play by whoever's running the show, and <laughs> um, especially a showcase. I always feel like if, if someone asks me to play at a showcase, I'm always like, thank you very much. <laughs> I hope I don't screw up, but you know what? I'm going to go in thinking, I, I, you know, I deserve to be here. Yes. You deserve to hear me kind of right. thing. <laughs> um, That's right. But don't expect anyone to write back. 
They yeah, will yeah, not yeah. write in. They will not write in and respond. It's okay. They heard you and trusted. That it'll, it'll be oh yeah, ne- it'll never be- mind about like submitting yourself to record labels yeah. or any of that stuff. <laughs> right on. Well, yeah. thank you very much for watching. Stick around. We're going to see you up in room six. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you, sir. It has been a pleasure. It's been emotional. So, thank you. <laughs> mm. In the meantime, remember to be amazing. We'll see you upstairs. Driving down the main street, past the fabrics by design. Past the family grocery store, man, the price is getting high. Look through the traffic jam, and it seems to go for miles. There's one thing on my mind that makes me smile, cause I know two lights, two rights, and then I'm home. To the greatest love I've ever known. No need for words because your smile says it all Your open arms will hold me forevermore Bombs are bursting all around Summer fear is in the air As I sat on the hard cold ground I'm wishing I was anywhere but here But then in my mind's eye I see you there and I am Two lights, two rights and then I'm home to the greatest love I've ever known No need for words because your smile says it all Your open arms will hold me forever Two lights, two rights, and then I'm home To the greatest love I've ever known No need for words because your smile says it all your open arms will hold me forever Time has come and family's all around Close my eyes and gently say goodbye Then I hear a voice I know Whisper in my ear No lights, no rights, you're finally here To the greatest love you'll ever know No need for words because my scars they say it all Your open arms will hold me forever No lights, no rights, I'm finally home To the greatest love I've ever known No need for words because your scars they say it all for coming on the show. It was a great interview and a great performance. If you want to know more about her, definitely check out links down in the description. If you want to be on the channel, like I said, <laughs> email me or click the Room 6 social media link for all the ways you can reach me online. Other than that, if you want to see more videos like this, please click up here. And if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, it really does make a difference. Please click down there and don't forget to ring the bell. Remember to be amazing and we'll see you next time yeah. on Room 6. Say goodbye, Kathy. Goodbye. Have a great night. Ba-da-ba-ba-da-ba.